Hello and welcome back to our inventory. I think this is episode 26 now. So hello and we are carrying on with our bit masking and filtering system for our item categories. So the item category so far uh, set up a filter system, but we haven't actually gone through and actually filtered out the individual slots. So that's what we're going to do today. Go through those individual slots, explain bit masking a bit more and how that can use the filter stuff. And more importantly, how to convert an enum into a bit mask and explain the math that's going on behind there too. So let's jump straight in and have a look at this. Okay, so last time we were here, we worked on our bitmask filter. So as a reminder, we made this simple function happen when we ticked on a filter to update the bitmask filter over here. But we now need to actually do the filtering. So if we head over up here, we will see we've got the for each loop building our slots that we made before uh, way back when. So what we need to do is we need to intersect this section here with some kind of function which is going to filter out whether it should add it or not. Now, every time we uh, want to update this, we just call the updated inventory and it will clear it and update it. So we'll do that step right now. We'll just go back down to our unfilter changed and just call the updated inventory event. So I'll go up to there, clear the children and then repopulate the grid. Next, we need to create the filter function here. So let's go to functions and we go to filter item. Okay, so the item is going to need a data uh, value. Okay, so it's going to take in this array element of the uh, slot structure. More importantly, it's going to take in the item ID. So let's just add in the slot structure as a filter item. So we're going to go down to inputs and we're going to search for slot struct and we'll give that slot a name okay so the first thing it's going to do you're going to take this out and break it open so we get the item id all on its own we are then going to take from there and get the data table row because we need to get the information from the data table so we plug that in there and choose the item data now we have access to the out row we can now add our category to our item data. So you need to go back to your item struct where you put down the name, description, thumbnail, all of this stuff regarding your item. And we need to add the enum for our category. So add variable category and you choose the enum for e category. Uh, e item category, wasn't it? There we go. And hit save. And close that and if you look at the data table now we can set the category per item so you click on here and choose if one we wanted so now we've got that let's go back to our inventory grid take out the out row and break it open to get access to all of our information in there we'll see the category information now the difference is is that this is an enum and our filter is a bit mask so we need to convert the enum here to a bit mask which is not as simple as you think it may be so let me explain why and how we're going to solve the problem. So here we are back in Excel and we've got our five different categories down here and we're going to look at what each byte is for each one. So a byte as an enum is referring to each element of this. So food here is byte zero. Then it's byte one, two, three, four. Okay. Now as a bit, these are a bit different. So food is uh, stored as a different type of bit though this would be uh, for example uh, one uh, zero 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 one okay whereas materials oh that doesn't help does it uh, we'll just do zero 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 one oh, there you go uh, materials is going to be zero 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 one zero equipment and you kind of see where this is going And then finally, junk. So when we set a bit mask, this is what they look like. It'd be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and so on. But as a byte, food is just 0. Well, now we've got to convert the bit here to an int. So if you know your binary maths, you have your bytes in powers of base 2. So 
this first one here is 2 to the power of 1. Okay. 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3, uh, no, sorry, 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, and so on and so on. So as bit as int, this equals a uh, 1. This equals 2. This equals 4, 8, 16. So this value in binary equals 16. This equals 8. This equals 4. This equals 2. And this equals 1. And basically what it's saying is that this is 2 to the power of 0. 2 to the power of 1. 2 to the power of 2. 2 to the power of 3. 2. Oh. 2 to the power of 4. Now, if you look here, 2 to the power of 0, well, that's the byte. And you can see here the bytes uh, here. So if we make the bytes here the, uh, the power, the exponential, then we can create or convert the bit here to the byte. Because 2 to the power of 0 equals 1, 2 to the power of 1 equals 2, 2 to the power of 2 equals 4, 2 to the power of 3 equals 8, and 2 to the power of 4 equals 16. So the sum is we have to take the byte and put that as the expo exponent of our 2 to the power, and that will create the, uh, the, the, the bit version of it. Okay, So let's go take a look at that inside our function. So we need to first of all convert our byte here, uh, a number here, to a byte. So 2 byte. And this is really a byte. Uh, sorry, two int. Uh, oh, two integer. There you go, byte. And we have to convert the integer here to a float in order to do our exponent. So we do two to float. And then we'll do to the power. But as I said, you want the byte here to be the exponent. So you want to make the pin go into the X, exp pin. Okay. The base here will be 2. So it's 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 3, and so on. And, so on. and that will give us the bit mask value. So now we will need to convert the make the, the bit mask that we have. So we want to go into to our options here, and we want to look for make bit mask. Now, make bit mask looks pretty simple as you just drop down and you choose the flags you want to use. Uh, you can actually choose the enum by selecting it and going to the right hand side in the details panel, you'll see the or left hand side, sorry, the bit mask enum and choose your item category. But this is essentially the same as saying like flag one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. So rather than using this as an integer, if we convert uh, as a bit mask, we're going to use it as an integer. So if I drag this over to here, you'll see it can't work. But if I truncate this, to an integer, I can now plug that into the bit mask. So I converted a byte to a bit mask. Okay, and that's what we've got here. Okay, so next I need to know whether or not um, our filter contains this item. So we're going to drag out our current filter, and we're we'll going to do and, and we're going to put in our bit mask. If the value coming out of here is equal to the bit mask value, that means it is valid and it should be included. So let's include that in a return node here. Return node, and we'll put that in there. We'll plug it into the found of the row, and we're good. So we're getting the category, converting it to an integer, then into a float, and then we're doing power base of two to the exponent of the byte. So 2 to the power of 0, for example, equals 1. The bit mask, 1, gives you flag 1. And flag 1 is the first option being turned on. Current filter and the make bit mask will do an AND operation, which basically says a query, like does it contain this flag in it? And if it does, it will return true. So with that done, we can actually convert this into a pure function. I tick in the box in the function details, go back to our event graph, drag out filter item, and we're going to plug in our slot 
into the filter item. And then we can plug in our Boolean into a branch and put in the true. And that's it. So if I go now into the game, push play, I'm going to push the I button, and you'll see at the moment there's nothing in my inventory. That's because none of the filters are turned on. So if I click on food, though, you can see now food's appearing. If I click on others, you can see that food was still turned on, so it'd be included anyway. But if I turn food off, it'd be removed. Now, what we're going to do finally on here is when, if this is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, we're going to turn it into 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so let's take a look at that. And we're going to go into our grid. So the problem is, is that when we've got all the filters turned off, we want them to automatically turn all of them on. Uh, so if no filters are applied, it will just show a thing anyway. So what we're going to do is change this current filter if it is equal to zero. So you work this out by dragging out from your pin here, and you can't just do equals equals because it won't let you. Uh, so what you've got to do instead is you have to convert this first of all to a float. So to float. And then you can convert, uh, compare that to zero. And put that into a branch. <clears throat> if that is false, we want it just to continue anyway, updating inventory. But if it's true, we want to change the current filter to turn them all on. So current filter, we're going to do is set. Plug that in. And we're going to set it to all of the flags. Okay. So we're going to drag out from here and do make bit mask. And do that. And turn on all of the flags. So we choose our item category from the list. Turn all of them on. And then call updated inventory. So this is half of the solution. Because if we were to test this out. And if I just go to inventory. Just turn one on. Turn one off. You can see there's a food there. But if I were to turn your food back on. And then turn it off again. Materials. You see it's on for materials now. Equipment, even though it shouldn't be. So an issue we have at the moment is that if we've got no filters applied, we see nothing in our content, which is kind of against what we normally would expect. We would expect that if you have no filters applied, it will just show everything anyway. It would only filter out if we actually select natural filters. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little check to see if the filter is empty. And if it is, then we're not going to bother clearing this. So we'll go back here and go back to our inventory grid. So to check if it's empty, you're going to take the current filter and you're going to see if this is equal to zero. Now at the moment, this is a bit mask integer, so you can't just do equals, equals, it won't work. So what we need to do first of all is convert to a float. So convert to float. And now you can check if it's going to be equal to zero. Put that into a branch. Okay, and if it's false, it will just crack on with updating inventory with the filters. If it is true, though, I want to add a little variable in here. So is filter active? This would be a Boolean. And if this is true, and we have nothing selected, we can set the is filter active to nothing. If it's false, we're going to set it to true. Okay, and then we're going to plug that in to both of these. We're then going to use that Boolean over on the filter item variable here. So it's filter active. We're going to drag out and put it into a branch. Plug this in. And if filter's active, true, we'll go to the regular return node. If it's false, though, we're going to have another return node, and that's always going to be ticked on to be true. So it always allow the item through. So let's test this out. Hit play, and if I hit the I button now, we can see food is now appearing in our list. And if I click on food, it's going to apply that filter, no problem. But if I untick it, it'll still be there. However, if I go onto materials, it will now hide it because it's not a material. Uh, but if I unhide materials, it will now reappear and show the whole entire inventory like normal. And we can see potions, nothing. But if I turn on food, something. Okay. And now we've got a nice ordering, filtering system for our inventory. 
So there you go. We've now made a filtering system. Um, by all means, add more items and see how it works with multiple items. It should work no problem. But it's a very nice, elegant solution to use bitmasks for a filtering type system in a game. Now, if you like this video and want to see more from our inventory series, we've got more videos coming, including more about tooltips and others too. You can watch those videos early, as well as many others, right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.